The Hidden Stars of Fourth of July. Welcome back, everyone, and if this is your first time here, then hi there to you. But you should know, you should only stay if you're cool with having your mind blown like fireworks on the Fourth of July, because in this piece, I'm going to show you just a bit about how we discovered what many might call the code of the matrix, how to read it, and how to decode it. Using a language almost everyone has seen, but almost no one actually knows. Can you imagine what you could do with this kind of knowledge if you knew it? Now, if your response is, nah, not really, <laughs> you want to just go back to your phone, that's cool. But for those that I've intrigued, of course, I don't expect you to believe me. That's why we do the work here that we do, to show you. Now, this one is for the intermediate and probably the more advanced level truth seekers and truth finders. So if you don't see right away what I'm going to show you in this piece, but you want to learn how to, no worries. We've got a beginner course here. You can step your way into this highest knowledge at your own pace. Just check out the playlist here on our channel or follow the links down in the description to our website, starsnearme.com, to find out more. What we're looking at here are the real stars of what is known as America's Independence Day, celebrated famously on the 4th of July. Yes, the real stars. The same stars that you're going to find out play roles in every famous story you've ever been told. This is the same template that's used to create them all, including the story we're looking at here, how the land we commonly call America today was born and why we celebrate. These are the stars in the sky that you're undoubtedly going to see in a completely new way you've never seen before. So let's take a closer look and see what I mean, if you can. This is an image we're looking at here of what appears in the night sky above our heads if you were a stargazer on the ground looking up at the sky from the land we commonly call America today. And we're looking at this very special place in the sky we've nicknamed the real oracle or the real all-seeing eye. So we're looking just after the midnight hour, or the quote, official start of the new day, that's the when, and we're on the 4th of July. This is a representation of what you would see in the sky above your head. Star constellations in the celestial heavens with one hell of a story to tell, if you know how to really read the sky story and then decode it, like we're doing here and now. It's the birth of a new nation story. It's America that's being celebrated as we get started like a newbie, so to speak, during the midnight hour, the birth of the official new day, the 4th of July specifically, where we see the constellation known as Virgo the Virgin diving into what appears to be the western horizon of the earth. So first think America being in the quote western world, right? America's known to be a part of the western world, right? And also think the state of Virginia, Virgo, Virgin, Virginia. Now, also that Virginia, the state, was one of the 13 original colonies. Now, Virginia is most definitely named after this constellation, and we are not the first to make this connection, but we are the first to make the connection of specifically why and when. This is definitely why, because the new virgin nation in the West, the land of America as it's known today, is about to be born specifically on the 4th of July in the heavens first. And then take a look at the constellation known as Ophiuchus. Also, it's in the sky in the West. Just take a look at the shape that Ophiuchus makes in the night sky on the 4th of July and compare that to this famous poster of Uncle Sam with his top hat on. Can you see the top hat coming out of the shape Ophiuchus makes in the sky? And if that's not enough, doesn't Uncle Sam usually always have his finger pointed right at you like he does in this famous poster? We'll look below Ophiuchus' location, and it's right below it, right? how the constellation of Scorpio is shaped. Can you see where that fist with the pointing finger came out of the scorpion in the sky's shape? All right, so you might be thinking, these three examples that I've shown you so far could just be left up to loose speculation and interpretation, right? Something like cloud watching. 
We'll look right next to Ophiuchus before you go too far with that. To Ophiuchus's left, there's Aquila the eagle there. And we all know the American eagle symbol. I mean, not a lot of symbols are more recognizably American than that, right? And then tie this in. How do we celebrate the commemoration of the birth of America on the 4th of July? We all know with fireworks in the night sky that night, right? Just like the shape the constellation known as Hercules makes high in the sky the same night. And then look down below it. Look at Scorpio again, down near the Earth's horizon. Can you see fireworks also there in Scorpio shape? But even more specifically, can you see why we burn sparklers that we hold in our hands this night as well? And then look way over to the left, or from what is rising from the east. You see the constellation of Pisces there again. And from the way that it's shaped in its current location in the sky story on the 4th of July here, can you see more fireworks there? And more specifically, the shooting rocket's red glare from the National Anthem 2 in the way that Pisces, the two fishes, is shaped? Now, if you know your American His story, you know that this American story all started because of that very rowdy Boston Tea Party, right, that led to the American Revolutionary War. This was before America ended up being declared independent from England on what we call, on what we call our calendar today, the year 1776, but it was on July 4th, right, this day. And that's where you see the constellations found in the east where things in the heavens begin on the beginning of this 4th of July day. The constellations of Aquarius, the water bearer, Pegasus, the winged horse, and Pisces, the two fishes. And we're going to see they're going to play a role again. But you're going to want to watch this to the end to find out how these dots are connected in the revolution and birth of America story. So we're going to go ahead here to the next three hours in the wee hours of the morning now on the 4th of July. Still on the ground in what we commonly call America today, looking up at the sky at that special place found by facing due south where the arc of the ecliptic crosses the north-south meridian line. That special place we call the real oracle or the real all-seeing eye. And we see from this perspective, rising from the eastern horizon, a constellation now we call Cetus. Cetus looked to many storytellers, even going back to our most ancient past, as we're going to see here as we unfold these massive discoveries that we're making, that from the way that Cetus is shaped, this constellation looks like a heavenly newborn child. But for this story, this child that's been born from the east to the ground below it, while the fireworks of Pisces are launched above its head, this is the newborn baby America, you see. Moving ahead now in the sky story above America, we're at dawn now on the 4th of July. So just as the sun is about to rise. So these are the last stars then, in other words, that we're going to be seeing in the night sky this day before the sun rises and makes the stars invisible to our eyes. And we've got Uncle Sam in his top hat playing Ophiuchus going down into the western horizon of the earth. And Aquila the American Eagle is beside him. And now over above the eastern horizon, we see new constellations in Auriga and Taurus that have risen. The shape of Auriga and Taurus taken together looking like another top hat, right? Or think crown like the crown of England, from which America claimed on the dawn of this new 4th of July day, independence from. And then take a look at what's now lined up high in the sky above the cross of the north-south meridian line and the arc of the ecliptic. It's Pegasus, but look at its shape and its location on the dawn of this 4th of July day. What could be more American than the symbol of the American flag flying from the flagpole that is the north-south meridian line that Pegasus has flown from here in the sky story? 
And the image of this American flagpole you can see is topped with that famous American eagle. And we already now know that that's a reference to Aquila that flies right next to Pegasus in this particular sky story. And if you know your flag protocol, you can add in this piece. You already know that the American flag is raised briskly. But when do you raise it? Well, of course, it's when and where we're looking at right here at dawn of the new day. A flag raising ritual continued today because of this specific sky story alignment you're looking at here. On this day, at this time, from this specific on the ground location, looking up at the sky, looking up at American skies you can think of, that's really why. Now the story does continue when the sun rises and the stars become occulted or hidden by the sun's light, where we see over the eastern horizon a new constellation known today as Orion, is there but is invisible to our eyes. But we can still compare the shape of the constellation of Orion to one of several famous statues of George Washington. We're told George Washington was a hero, a general of the American Revolutionary War, and that's how he ended up becoming our first American president, right? The statue of George Washington you can find at the National Museum of American History in the nation's capital. Washington, D.C., also taking its name from this same man, George Washington. Seated there with one arm up and the other arm out to his side. Posed up exactly like the constellation known today as Orion in the sky. Now, surely, if you've made it to this point in the video, you're at least starting to see that this is far beyond coincidence here. The sequence alone in which this is occurring and how all this is matching up, it does this in all the most famous stories that we know, but we're looking specifically at this American Independence Day story of the 4th of July. Now, in this long sneak peek look that we're doing here, I want to just add in a few more pieces to this 4th of July story before we end. And we were speaking of George Washington, which takes us right back to the beginning again. So remember there at the beginning of this piece, we started at the hour of midnight on the 4th of July. And I said that we'd get back to the constellations of Aquarius, the water bearer, Pisces, and Pegasus rising from the east at this time. Well, let's pull up this famous image of the Boston Tea Party, the event that we're told kicked this whole American Revolution off. Let's take a closer look here. Now the story goes that those, quote, Indians that you see on that big ship were tossing boxes of tea into the Boston Harbor. And specifically they were doing this at a place called Griffin's Wharf. Now there's a good reason it was specifically Griffin's Wharf but we'll save that story of the griffin for another video. But in this Boston Tea Party story, we're told that those protesters tossing that East Indian Company tea, they were doing it by tossing it from the ship into the water. They were only dressed up, pretending to be, quote, Indians. If you look closer at those pretend Indians doing this tea tossing, you can see the feathers on top of their heads look exactly like how Pisces is shaped as it's rising up in the 4th of July sky from the eastern horizon, right? Aquarius, the water bearer, is located right next to Pisces in the new 4th of July day. And that's why the tea got dumped into the water of the harbor for this story, you can see. It's Aquarius, the water bearer referencing that location. And just above Pisces and Aquarius's locations, take a look at the constellation of Pegasus again in the way that it's shaped. Looking not only like those big boxes of tea being tossed off the ship, but doesn't Pegasus also look just like a tea bag, complete with the strings? All right, so that leaves a pretty obvious question. Where's the ship? Well, this is the cool part, and this is where it gets deep, for real deep. 
we're going to be looking at the same time, midnight hour on the 4th of July, right? 4th of July is brand new, just beginning. The sky above what we call America, we're still looking at, but we've shifted our view of what we've nicknamed the real oracle or the real all-seeing eye. So we can take a look at the stars hidden from our view normally when we look. Hidden from our perspective being that they're below the horizon of the earth, if you are in the American part of the world when you're looking. But these same constellations, invisible to the American viewer of the sky, they are visible in other parts of the world, like in the southern hemisphere locations, for example. So even though occulted or hidden from the American viewpoint at this time, those same star constellations are still visible in other places, like Australia, for example. Now, looking at the real all-seeing eye in the sky from this view, you can start to connect the dots on the real reason why the land of Australia got its famous nickname as the land down under. Now, the ship we're looking for, it's definitely like sunken, buried treasure. We're looking for it, and we're going to take a deep dive into the celestial ocean straight down the north-south meridian line where you run into three constellations right on it known as Carina, Vela, and Puppis at this time. Three parts of what is now a crashed and broken ship that taken together, these three constellations of Carina, Vela, and Puppis used to be a huge constellation of a massive ship that was once called Argo back in the day. This is an old celestial atlas drawing of Argo, as it was known then. And just take a look at how similar it looks to that same ship that the actor Indians were throwing the tea off into the harbor. So let's connect these things. Boston, where this supposedly occurred, is on the east coast of the land that we are talking about here, America. And it was the East Indian Company's tea. Again, it's because Pisces, Pegasus, and Aquarius are all rising in the east at the midnight hour on America's birthday. And the east is where things begin. And the American Revolution began with this Boston Tea Party story. It just happened to occur in the east on the land. But more specifically... In the water. That's the event that started the American Revolution, we're told. Well, this is the real revolution. And it did start on the land we still commonly call America today, but this one isn't any physical war fought over the independence of a nation. It's learning the real language of the revolution we all over the earth are a part of already. This highest knowledge is what leads to real freedom. That is, if you're willing to be literate in freedom's language. Visit starsnearme.com for more. Get on our private email list. Like I said in the beginning of the video, you can check out our beginner video course to learn the star constellations of the Northern Hemisphere. This helps build up your knowledge needed to be able to eventually read this code of the matrix and to use this language. You can start with the playlist here on the channel in combination with our book series, Constellations by Campfire, The Easy and Naked Eye Way. You can find that on our website. The links are in the description. And while you're there, visit our starsnearme.com shop. You can find lit designs like these. Just wearing them might help spark, out, spark up much better and more interesting conversations than the ones that we're normally having. Maybe conversations about this highest knowledge that we're learning here, that we're hoping to share with many, at least those who have the hearts and minds to want to know. All right, I think that's going to do it for this piece. Thank you for spending the time with us that you did. And until next time, stay lit and be well.